just out of the blue. How many people you know that had to have a leg amputated because they're diabetic? You understand? All of that because we disobey God's laws. Now watch this. How much better would their life have been if they just applied God's laws from the beginning? It would have been a whole lot better. So, what's your name, young man? Come on. Say it again. Leonard. Leonard. So, Leonard, what is, so far, what have you learned about yourself? According to the Bible, what is your nationality? What is your nationality? Judah. All praises. So, now, what does God require of you knowing that you're an Israelite? What does God require of you? Huh? Racism? No. He doesn't require to know your race is a requirement so that you can do his commandments. Look, that's what we're showing to our people. But once you learn your nationality, you also learn your enemies. And you also learn that your enemies are teaching you a certain thing, but God wants you to learn something totally different. Yes. Understand? Matter of fact, get first Corinthians fifteen thirty three, because earlier it was brought up that music sometimes teaches us evil. Does God talk about how we should uh, guard with our ears here? Let's see what God says. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Because you hear the music that our children are listening to today. Some of the music that we grew up with. How does God give us a warning about what we take into our minds? Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Oh, no. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. God says evil communication corrupts good manners. Now, Leonard, you, Leonard, right? What types of things are in black music? What would you say? Uh, drugs. Drug dealing. So either you're going to be the dealer or the addict, right? What else goes on in our music? Read. Right, go ahead. What else? Cussing. Cussing. Now, sisters, right here. My brother right here, you said you are a Christian. We're definitely reading the Bible. So read that again. Because we're talking about the culture that we've learned here in America. But part of our culture has our people walking by, the, by their own brothers and ignoring them. But we'll go to our enemies and spend all our money. That's evil communication. Read it again. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Our people have been tricked into learning that they're black uh, Hispanic Native American but God calls you the Israelites but, so we're trying to pull our people out of the trickery we're trying to pull our people out of the oppression read evil communication evil communication can happen in music it can happen on the TV but, it can happen in multimedia settings and we're asking ourselves as a people what's going on with the generations after us Bring it up. we have not taken heed to the Bible as it is written we've taken heed to the doctrine that has kept us oppressed as a people but, we don't corrupt good manners what are the good manners God's laws God's laws are the good manners that we should be learning get that in Romans 7 because what, what law did we give them that just walked away? Do you remember? What, what did the Bible say was wrong? About how uh, their preference. We had women up here saying that they choose women. Le gay and lesbian, right? Now, can two women make a child? Can two women give birth to a child? They can Without a man? You say you don't know. You probably, well, how old are you? 12? Oh, yeah, you ain't, you ain't put the math together yet. Yeah. So, God ordained marriage first. Okay? 
man and woman bring forth children. Bert. But nowadays in school, they're actually trying to teach homosexuality, transgender, so that you don't learn what God says is wrong and what God says is right. Bert. What I got you holding? Good. That's Romans right. chapter 7 and verse 12. Bring it up. The question is, what is good? Read. Wherefore, the law is holy, uh -huh. and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So the commandments of God, Leonard, are good for you to learn. As a young man growing up, you should be wanting to learn God's laws so that you can become the man that God intends you to be. Work. Watch this. Get First Kings 2 and 2. Because uh, growing up, we have never had those male role models, really, right? So... We need to be hearing from the role models of our for, uh, our own forefathers. This is what David told his son. So this is what you should be learning. Read. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Bring it up. Have you ever asked the question, how do I become a man? It, is killing somebody going to make you a man? Is selling drugs going to make you a man? Is, is, is pimping all the women in your community going to make you a man? No. Let's find out what God says will make you an upright man. All right? Read. I go the way of all the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. How do we do that? Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimony. So you got to learn God's laws. I'm going to give you one of God's laws right now. I know it's cold out here, so you're probably protecting yourself. Get 1 Corinthians 11. Because you say you understand. You said what tribe you from? What's, what tribe did you say you're from? You say you're from Judah. That's that's some very important stuff. So we're gonna I'm gonna actually show you an important person who's from the tribe of Judah. Let's get I still I want want that. First Corinthians eleven and three. You got it? Yes. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse three. Bring it but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Go ahead. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So the Bible just said, every man, you're a young man, right? Having his head covered. As cold as it is, do you see any of the men with us with our heads covered? No. Why? There's a commandment that is good for us to understand that we obey. Yes. So now, hearing that commandment, what should you do? Because right now we're in the midst of prophecy. Reading the Bible, showing you who you are. What goodness is in the scriptures for you to learn? All you have to do is uncover your head to show your obedience and show that you are following those good manners. Does that make sense? So what should you do? Uncover your head. So you go ahead. Now how hard is it? That's right. The commandments of God are not hard. Now watch this. Watch this. Get, uh, I want Hebrews. Yes, you got it? Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it up. Yes. Now you're opening yourself up to the goodness about you in the scriptures. Watch it. You say you're from the tribe of Judah, right? Watch this. Read. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Our Lord sprang out of Judah. So who is our Lord? What's the name of our Lord? When we read the Bible, who is our Lord? Huh? Jesus Christ, right? Now, what color is Jesus Christ? I got a question, and I'm asking my brother Leonard right now, what color is Jesus Christ? Real simple question. Now, oh, come on, it, it's the, the pictures right here. We got pictures up here. I want you to help me out, young man. Okay? So, watch this. What's your name? Todd. I need your help, Todd. Out of all these pictures, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus on these pictures? And then Leonard, while he's looking for that, I, what did I ask Leonard? What color is Christ? Thank you. What color is Christ, Leonard? What color do y'all say Christ is? Out of all the colors, just choose one. Or can he be all colors? What, you say he can be all colors? Okay, so we got a, a red Jesus, an orange Jesus, a yellow Jesus. What you say? Okay, which one of these pictures has Jesus on it, Todd? Where's Jesus on these pictures? Which one? Huh? Point at because it's a bunch of pictures you got to show me. Put, t tap it. All right. So all y'all, how old are y'all? 14. 10, huh? 13. How old are you? 
All right, and the youngest man out here pointed to this image. So how do we, you know, we start, let's get what the Bible says. Because the Bible says, our Lord sprang out of Judah. Look on this sign right here. I want y'all to catch up where Leonard is. So this is what God calls his children on this side. But his children have been given these names throughout slavery. Okay? So American, Black, West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Colombian, Mexican, all those names were given to us in slavery. Now we're confused on what Jesus Christ actually looks like. Right. You understand? So watch this. So watch this. Yes, we are going over our history. What's your name, bro? My name Say it again. Shamushin. Okay, all praises. Now, what we're going over right now is the true image of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because Todd just said, this is Jesus Christ. My young family right here just said, Christ could be any color for all they know. So, we got to come to the common denominator, the Bible. Let's reveal Christ. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 14 Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool So we're describing Christ Because John actually saw Christ Alright He was dealing with Christ Walking with Christ It says he had hairs White in color And woolly in texture Now before you took this off You were covering up that woolly hair you have woolly hair. What's in, intertwined in that yakky bee is that woolly hair. What Ty got under his hat is woolly hair. What you got on your head and your face is woolly hair. So is this woolly hair right here? Huh? So what kind of animal has wool? What, help me out. Help me out. Huh? What, what kind of animal has wool? What kind of animal do we get wool from? Sheep. Does this look like sheep hair? That's not woolly. That's not woolly. So Christ's hairs were white in color and woolly in texture. We call this nappy hair, right? This is look, look, you see what I'm doing? Now it look like a sheep, right? Woolly hair. Who has woolly hair? Does this guy have woolly hair? Uh-oh. No, but we do, right? We don't. As white as snow. As white as snow, that's the color of his hair. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Do you know what Christ's first miracle is? Let's get that in Genesis. What was Christ's first miracle? Why would Christ's eyes be red? Like a flame of fire. Why? Help me out. Huh? Like what? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus. So we're going to find out why his eyes were red. This is what the Bible says. Read. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. So the Bible has always been prophesying about Jesus' uh, coming. And it says that when he comes, his eyes shall be red with what? With wine. With wine. That was his first miracle, right? Shamu How do you say your name? Shamushin. All right. So let's go back. Because we're still describing Christ. Now, does he have... Does, is, is that part of his eye red, Todd? Is that part of his eye red? Huh? It is? Oh, oh, right there? Okay, okay. I, I give you that. You, you saw the you saw the little shade in it. But when your eyes are red with wine, that means that the full whites of your eyes turn red, right? Right. Okay. We, we, we know about that. We've seen that in our communities. But let's see what color his skin is, Todd, okay? All right. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. Now, uh, what color is brass? Brown. Uh oh, Todd. Is his skin brown? Brown? Uh oh, that's not Jesus, Todd. That's right. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Y'all understand that? 
But why is it that in our hearts, minds, spirits, we believe that Jesus Christ can be any color? Doesn't matter what color he is. And then we say we believe in him. That's foolishness. Let's get that. Uh, John, uh, John chapter 8 verse 32. This is why we're coming to deal with our people on the streets. Teach you what the Bible says. Because somehow in your Christian church, they're not teaching that to you. Why? They want you to stay like that. I don't care how you look at it. How, uh, uh, it that's how your Christian pastor wants you to stay. A slave with no yokes of iron upon your neck. That's right. Still oppressed here in America, not understanding your true purpose and your true heritage. Read that. John chapter 8 verse 32. Uh -huh. Say it and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, we, you don't want to be a slave to your conditions. Now, I'm going to show you something. Get Leviticus 11. Get Leviticus. I'm going to show you how we're still acting and treating ourselves as slaves. What you got in that bag right there? I got to deal with it. What's that? Huh? What kind of skills? Pork skills. Now, amongst our people, what kind of diseases plague our community? Yes. Amongst, huh? Killing. I'm talking about health wise. Health wise. That's a, that's a, when we kill each other, that's a mental displacement. But as far as health wise, as far as how, what, how, thank you. So what does pork do to our bodies? It shuts you down. Through what diseases or plagues? Huh? What you got? High blood pressure, heart disease, coronary disorders, right? Because God said that's not supposed to be in our body. But we have not learned those laws, therefore we don't apply them. So let's, let me give it to you. a lot of things we're supposed to do, but we don't do it anyway, so what it is. Now watch this. That's why we're still slaves in the mind and we die of slave diseases. That's so watch this. Listen to what God says. Read. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Bring it up. And the swan, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the dirt. So God gave criteria of what is good for us to eat. Must be cloven footed and it must chew the cud. So the pig is cloven footed. Everybody didn't have a pig foot before. Cloven footed, but it does not chew the cud. So therefore, what does God say it is? He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. I don't care how much sauce you put on it. I don't care how long you cook it. Why? God says it's unclean because the way he created it, it was not supposed to be for us to ingest and eat. Birth. You understand that? But when we do go to Deuteronomy 28, 61, when we do disobey God's laws, are we going to expect anything good to come from it? We break laws every day, don't even realize it. Right. Now, do we suffer the consequences for it? Yep. We do. So how about this? What would be the opposite side? If we did obey, wouldn't we see better outcomes? Yeah. So all we got to do is simply obey. Watch yeah, this. Right. You got children? You don't have to. Anybody got children? Now, imagine you do have children. You say, hey, I want you in the house by the time the street lights come on. Why would a parent put those kind of uh, pretenses around their child? Because there's safety. I need to be aware of where you are. And I want to be aware that you are safe even if I'm not around. Right? God has put these laws for us to keep so that he can be aware that we are safe. By following his instruction. Point yeah. blank period. Well, since you said it like that, since they passed these laws, you can't touch these children so now. Oh, but it, it's hard to just This is the thing. Them. Our nation has been touched by our oppressors. And guess what? Nowadays they take their hands off and we do it for them. Nobody forced you to buy pork skins. You did it on your own because of your own lust. Right. You wanted that taste. Right. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? You gotta be corrected by God's laws. What I got you over there? Deuteronomy 2861. This is the curse that falls upon our people for disobeying God's laws. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Bring it up. Also, every sickness and every plague, uh -huh. which is not written in the book of this law. So God says, I'm going to create diseases. When you disobey me, I'm going to start creating diseases to hit you when you diso disobey my orders. Right. You understand that? So... Heart disease, coronary disorders, this, that, and the third, heart palpitation. God didn't have that uh, uh, created. 
at this time, but because of our wickedness, he said, you know what, I'm going to fix them. But guess what? Have we been taught that from the beginning? No. But today is your day. That's right. All you got to do is just throw those pork skins away. Yeah, you spent, you probably spent uh, $5 and got barbecue sauce in the car, ready to tear it up. Yep. But all you got to do in your repentance is throw it away. That's it. That's right. It's not that hard. It sure ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. But guess what? When you get in that car, you're going to make a decision. You probably already done made the decision. But you got to repent, bro. You got to, re let's get repentance. What is repentance? Huh? When you do wrong. Okay. But what about when you know what's wrong and you gotta and you gotta make a decision forward on whether you're gonna do it or not? You gotta decide if you wanna do it or not. I want first kings. I want first kings. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. Because that's why we teach our people their nationality. You have a purpose now. You also have regulations that you must follow to be in the order that God sets you up in. You understand? So what do you expect to get out of that? That's why we're showing our people the punishments that have already fallen on us for doing wrong. So if you continue to do wrong, knowing that there are judgments for it, what are you calling upon yourself? You don't have to do wrong. You have to make a choice. If you want to do wrong, you know the consequences. Do it anyway. Okay. Uh oh. No. This is what I want. Ezekiel three and seventeen. This is what I want. Now, you said that basically, when you hear uh, uh, the laws of God, I got to put it in those. You either make a decision to do right or wrong based on basically what you're gonna do. Watch what the Bible says about that, because God knows His people. He knows how rebellious we are. Right. He knows that we already have our minds made up to either do right or wrong. But watch this. This is where the buck stops. Read. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Bring it out. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. You see why we're out here? We're watching out for your soul. Right. Now, whether you want to watch out for your soul, we're out here to do a job to save your soul. Right. Read. Unto the house of Israel. You are the house of Israel. That's we're right. teaching our people to repent and come back to God's laws. Eating pork is against God's laws and you will die because of it. Right. And don't think just because it don't happen today that you won't suffer for it as you're waiting on that death. Read on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Hear the word at God's mouth. We're reading God's instruction right now. Read on. And give them warning from me. Give them what? Give them warning. Give them what? Give them warning. If you don't stop eating that pork, you will surely die and it will be a terrible death. That's, That's right. right. Point blank period. No Read on. No kingdom after that. So don't think that you're going to disobey God's laws and then get to go to heaven. You disobey him on earth. So what heaven were you looking for on earth? What were you applying in earth to get to that heaven? Read on. When I say unto the wicked. Thou shalt surely die. Uh oh. And thou givest him not warning, uh -huh. nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. So, are we warning y'all right now? Warning you according to God's laws. Is that what we're doing right now? Read on. To save his life. Uh, to do what? To save his life. To save your life. Read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Uh huh. Read. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So if we weren't doing the work of the Lord, not wanting you to save your life, and we see you in the midst of your sin, we don't say nothing. That blood of yours is on our hands. But read the next part. Read. Yet if thou warn the wicked, yet we're warning you in that wickedness. Read. And he turn not from his wickedness. If you make the decision to stay in your wickedness after you've been warned according to the laws of God, read. Nor from his wicked way. Nor from the wickedness that is in your hand and about to go into your mouth and go through your system and kill your body. Read. He shall die in his iniquity. He shall what? He shall die in his iniquity. You will die in your iniquity. And do you get to see the pearly gates? No, you don't. You see how important that decision is? Throw that away. That's right. That's right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. 
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.